بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ٹوڈے آئی ایم گوئنگ ٹو ٹاک اباؤٹ ریکٹل کارسینوما سو دیٹ دا ریکٹل ڈیزیزز ٹاپک ریکٹل پرابلمس دیٹ ول بی دس از دا لاسٹ لیکچر ان دس سیریز تو لرننگ آبجیکٹو آف دس لیکچر از دیٹ ایٹ دا اینڈ آف دس لیکچر آل دی اسٹوڈنٹس شوڈ بی ایبل ٹو نو اباؤٹ the pathogenesis, clinical features, investigations, differential diagnosis and then staging of the disease and after staging obviously we we'll treat the patient. So the student should be able to know all these aspects of rectal carcinoma. Globally, Colorectal cancer is the second most common malignancy affecting more than 1 million people every year and this also resulting in around about 715,000 deaths annually. It is the second most common cancer in women and the third most common cancer in men. Also, it is the fourth most common cause of cancer death after lung, stomach and liver cancer. In western countries, the incidence is rising with an overall 14% increase since 1970s but with the largest increase 20 percent seen in males so the increase this more in males this increase annual increase which is noticed rectum is the most frequently involved site accounting for approximately one third of the cancers Risk factors for rectal carcinoma, colorectal carcinoma that they include diets, smoking, obesity and lack of physical exercise. Most colorectal cancers are due to an old age with around 60% of the cases of carcinoma rectum, rectum affecting patients which are above 70 years are older it is the most frequently involved site the rectum as far as the uh, pathogenesis is concerned regarding color, uh, rectal carcinoma colorectal cancer originates from pre-malignant precursor lesions in the epithelial lining of the colon or rectum in a stepwise progression that results in increasing dysplasia due to an accumulation of genetic abnormalities. So that results, there are, there are stepwise genetic mutations, genetic abnormalities which occur in this the pathogenesis of the rectal carcinoma and this also in, uh, increases the dysplasia. In, in spontaneous colorectal cancer as compared to hereditary cancers this is referred to as the adenoma carcinoma sequence this stepwise progression from genetic abnormalities in spontaneous cases as compared to, to the hereditary type it is the sequence is called adenoma carcinoma sequence in the pathogenesis of rectal carcinoma now these genetic 
more than 75 to 95 percent of the colorectal cancer occur in people with little or no genetic risk so the spontaneous colorectal cancers they are in majority as compared to the genetic type of uh, uh, colorectal cancer people with inflammatory bowel disease are at an increased risk to develop carcinoma rectum this increases with the duration of the disease keep in mind the inflammatory diseases they are more prone to there is a risk to develop cancer in these patients and this has directly pro proportionate to the duration of the disease and this accounts about 2% of the cancers colorectal cancers each year each year 2% of the colorectal cancer they are basically inflammatory bowel disease and then going into invasive carcinoma there is a malignant change in these patients those with a family history in two or more first degree relatives have a two to three fold greater risk of disease this is genetic type of uh, 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 colorectal carcinoma and this group accounts for about 20 percent of all the cases of rectal carcinoma so a number of genetic syndromes are also associated with higher rates of colorectal cancer the most common is hereditary non polyposous colorectal cancer which is also called hnpcc or lynch syndrome this syndrome which is which is hereditary non polyposous colorectal cancer and this which accounts about for about 3% of the people with colorectal cancers other syndromes include gardner syndrome then familial adenomatous polyposis there is a definite uh, incidence of almost all the cases they they have invasive rectal carcinoma the genetic mutations can be inherited or acquired the most common mutated gene they are with the apc gene others are tp53 gene then tgf tumor growth factor beta gene etc so these are the different uh, genes in which there is there is the there is the mutations and this results in the development of rectal carcinoma as i told you adenoma carcinoma sequence no in addition to the genetic mutation colorectal cancers frequently exhibit epigenetic alterations cellular or physiological effects resulting from external and environmental factors that switch genes on and off so this is another aspect in the pathogenesis of rectal carcinoma now we talk about the clinical feature the presentation of the rectal carcinoma carcinoma of the rectum can occur early in life but the age of presentation is usually above 55 years when the incidence rises rapidly previously usually it was called the disease of elderly but nowadays we have seen younger patients presenting with rectal carcinoma even around uh, 20 we have seen patient with rectal carcinoma this is a recent change we have seen in the behavior of rectal carcinoma often the early symptoms are so insignificant that the patient does not seek advice for six months or even more and the diagnosis is often delayed in younger patients as the symptoms are attributed to benign disease benign causes initial rectal examination and a low threshold for investigating persistent symptoms are essential for early diagnosis again i repeat initial rectal examination 
and a low threshold for investigating persistent symptoms uh, regarding rectum they are essential if you want to diagnose rectal carcinoma early different symptoms with which these rectal carcinoma they present with bleeding is the earliest and the most common symptom typically the bleeding is bright red in color and painless it can be mixed with the motions stool or separate in the toilet bowl bowl it can be indistinguishable from hemorrhoidal bleeding so this is one uh, when there is bleeding per rectum we have to differentiate it from the hemorrhoids then the second symptom is tenesmus the patient experiences a sensation of needing to evacuate the rectum but he is unable to pass a motion this urge is called tenesmus this is an important early symptom and is almost invariably present in patients with tumors of the lower half of the rectum so this tenesmus is more associated when the rectal carcinoma is in the lower half of the rectum the patient may endeavor to empty the rectum several times a day spurious diarrhea often with passage of flatus and little blood stained mucus bloody slime it is also called another present clinical presentation another feature of uh, rectal carcinoma a very important symptom is alteration in bowel habit whenever there is a alteration in bowel habit this is a very significant symptom it must be noticed there is frequently a change in bowel habit with a tendency to more frequent defecation and the passage of loose stools a patient who has to get up early in order to defecate or one who passes blood and mucus in addition to feces early this is also called early morning bloody diarrhea is usually found to be suffering from carcinoma of the rectum another symptom with which rectal carcinoma presents is pain it is a late symptom but pain of a colicky character may accompany advanced tumors of the rectus sigmoid owing to the a degree of obstruction so the, when there is a colicky pain in the abdomen with associated with the rectal carcinoma obviously it is a obstructing lesion advanced cancer and made outside the mesorectum may infiltrate the prostate or bladder anteriorly or the sacral plexus posteriorly so giving rise to severe intractable pain another symptom important sim is a mark weight loss so these patients they present with mark weight loss then this is associated with these symptoms must be given importance no as far as the uh, investigations are concerned or uh, and also um, examination so abdominal examination abdominal examination is normal in early cases occasionally in patients with stenosing tumors at the recto sigmoid junction there are signs of subacute large bowel obstruction with abdominal distension if large volume liver metastases are present so in those cases you can also palpate the liver with a palpable liver and large liver occasionally it may be possible to elicit ascites on physical examination abdominal examination so these are the features of abdominal examination which may be there in rectal carcinoma then rectal examination in many cases where the neoplasm is situated within 7 to 8 cm of the anal verge it can be felt on digital rectal examination as an elevated irregular and hard endoluminal mass so this is the finding on your parrectal digital rectal examination 
when when the center of the tumor ulcerates a shallow depression may be felt with raised and everted edges an attempt should be made to determine whether the new plasm is mobile tethered or fixed this is a very important finding which can be elicited on digital rectal examination and to esti to estimate the distance of lower margin from the top of the anal sphincter complex these factors are important in assessing resectability and methods of reconstruction following excisional surgery in females a vaginal examination may be useful if involvement of the posterior vaginal wall is suspected so digital rectal examination is important in rectal carcinomas this must be done other investigation examination in this in rectal carcinoma which we do is proctos sigmoidoscopy initially proctoscopy then rigid sigmoidoscopy is used rigid sigmoidoscopy can be performed in the outpatient clinic and is useful to identify the new plas and possibly we can have biopsies this is this is the use of rigid submidoscopy that we can also biopsy the lesion however it requires the rectum to be empty of feces so we have to prepare the patient for sigmoidoscopy and also colonoscopy a colonoscopy is required in most patients to exclude a synchronous tumor maybe so when when there is a diagnosis of rectal carcinoma we also do colonoscopy what is the idea behind colonoscopy that to exclude a synchronous tumor be it an adenoma or carcinoma in the other part of the of the in the colon if a proximal adenoma is even found it can be conveniently smeared and removed via colonoscopy if a synchronous carcinoma is present the operative strategy is likely to change then then we other investigation which can be performed in rectal carcinoma they are ct colonography so if a full colonoscopy is not possible for example where there is a stenosing cancer a ct colonography or barium anema can be performed in these patients then then they are also we can assess tumor markers which is cea and ca19-9 these are the tumor marker for colorectal carcinoma which should be assessed before uh, for the diagnosis and then then they are done for the prognostic value and then the follow up these tumor markers so a baseline level of these markers should be done in these patient then we have to do metastatic work up in these patients obviously these cancers once once they are diagnosed this is a cancer of the rectum we have to assess the chest abdomen and pelvis with ct scan we then ultrasonography of the abdomen which is also helpful for liver metastasis chest radiograph is also helpful for the metastasis of the lung pet scan positron emission tomography is a very sensitive investigation for distant metastasis and this can also be done for rectal carcinoma another very important investigation is endoluminal ultrasonography very very important this this basically is helpful to assess the local spread of the rectal carcinoma mri in these patient is also done for local staging or uh, to assess circumferential resection margin and the lymph node status in these patients uh, regarding the uh, uh, the differential diagnosis in these patients 
Many colorectal lesions can give rise to diagnostic difficult difficulty. So many colorectal lesions, they can be a differential diagnosis in these patients. For example, it may be difficult to distinguish an inflammatory stricture or amoebic granuloma on macroscopic appearance. Similarly, endometriomas, carcinite tumors and solitary rectal ulcers can be mistaken for adenocarcinoma. These are the differential diagnoses in cases of uh, rectal carcinoma. Benign adenomas can be distinguished from malignant lesions based on the appearance of their mucosal pit patterns. So, what is important to differentiate these lesions? Biopsy and histological analysis. This remains the mainstay of diagnosis. Another aspect of rectal carcinoma is what are the different types of spread, how the carcinoma rectum spreads. So the spread of the carcinoma rectum is a local spread, it is lymphatic spread, it is venous spread and then also along the peritoneal surface, silomic spread also called. So local spread, carcinoma rectum is notorious for local spread. It goes it circum spreads circumferentially rather than longitudinally. Anteriorly, it may, may involve prostate, seminal vesicle, bladder in male, vagina and uterus in female. Lateral spread can involve ureter. Posteriorly, it can involve sacrum and sacral plexus. It can cause pain and other features. Lymphatic spread in case of rectal carcinoma. If it is above the peritoneal refraction, it is reflection, it is in the upward direction. Below peritoneal reflection, still upward, except about 20% of cases where it is lateral to the pelvic wall. So, even below the peritoneal reflection, carcinoma rectum is there. Only in about 20% cases, the lymphatic drainage goes to laterally to the pelvic wall in the field of middle rectal arteries. Downward spread is exceptional with drainage along the subcutaneous lymphatics to the groin. So we can see in the lymphatic spread in rectal carcinoma is mainly cephalic upwards. It's not caudal. This must be kept in mind. That's why this because this is very important while resecting rectal carcinoma. So we have a longer upward margin as compared to the distal margin because of this lymphatic spread. Venous spread, spread through the blood, it is principal sites for blood-borne metastasis are liver, lungs, adrenals. Then about remaining areas may be secondary carcinomatosis and also including brain. So there are a number of sites where distant metastasis through blood bond spread can occur. Peritoneal spread, I told you another way of spread of rectal carcinoma. This follows penetration of the peritoneal coat by high line rectal carcinoma. That carcinoma rising from the upper third of the rectum or the middle of the rectum which has a relation with the peritoneal reflection. This way of spread can occur. Then we come to the staging of the disease. Once once we have diagnosed logically that this is a case of rectal carcinoma. It's invasive rectal carcinoma. So what is the next? What should be done? Because treatment it is the staging. Because treatment depends upon staging. So for treatment you have to stage the disease. And for this number of number of investigations they are done as i told you in the previous slide number of investigation which are staging investigation first we can talk about there are a number of staging systems one is duke's staging system and the second is tnm staging system also called radiological staging system 
duke staging stage system is still being used it has four stages stage a stage b stage c stage d duke was basically a pathologist histopathologist and he staged the disease because when he received the specimen he staged it stage a stage b stage c and stage d is a modification it is not done by the uh, duke it was a modification because he never received any metastasis distant metastasis as a pathologist what is stage a when the carcinoma is limited to the rectal wall 15% of the cases with excellent prognosis more than 90% 5 year survival when rectal carcinoma is stage a disease what is stage b due stage b when growth rectal carcinoma extends to the extra rectal tissue without lymph node metastasis they am count about 35% prognosis is reasonable that is about 70% five year survival stage c when when this is depo- then second when there is a lymphatic involvement second deposit in the regional lymph nodes about 50% of the cases so stage what is stage c due stage c when there is lymph node involvement and stage d when there are distant metastases like liver lung and any other site and this is this is stage d distant metastases keep in mind it was not done by duke it was basically a clinical uh, staging modification of the duke staging system now as far as the tnm staging system is concerned here again we have to uh, classify the disease we have to classify what is t in this particular patient what is lymph node status in this particular patient and then what are the distant metastases in this particular system so combination of this t and m then we stage the disease what is t in this patient this here you can see on the slide description of different t's tis when there is a carcinoma in situ t1 then tumor invades submucosa what is t2 tumor invades muscularis propria what is t3 when it invades through muscularis propria into peri colorectal tissue what is t4 when tumor has penetrated the serosal surface visceral peritoneum then we can group this t4a and t4b and what is t4b when it invades the surrounding organs or structures lymph node status again we can see tnm according to the tnm these are different levels of lymph node involvement nx n0 no lymph node involvement n1 metastasis in one to three regional lymph nodes and n2 is when metastasis in the regional lymph node it is in more four or more regional lymph nodes they are involved that's how we we assess the status of the lymph node involvement and you can see on this slide what are different lymph node involvement stages n1 n2 m denotes for distinct metastasis m0 no distinct metastasis m1 when there is a distinct metastasis maybe it is m1a metastasis confined to one organ or site liver lung ovary what what is m1b metastasis in more than one organ or site or territory this is m1b another aspect of rectal carcinoma and uh, uh, stay grading system histological grading is to in the great majority of cases carcinoma of the rectum is an adenocarcinoma which is derived from malignant transformation of the columnar rectal epithelium the more the tumor cells retain normal shape and arrangement it is well differentiated carcinoma then it is the, the more it goes towards undifferentiation then we can say moderately differentiated carcinoma and then 
poorly differentiated carcinoma. These are basically histological grades and this has prognostic value also affect the treatment of the rectal carcinoma. Now if we come to the treatment Here I can present a, a summary regarding the pathology and staging of rectal carcinoma. Tumors are adenocarcinomas and are well, moderately and poorly differentiated in grading. They spread by local lymphatic, venous and transport peritoneal routes. Circumferential local spread is the most important and it dictates the management. Lymphatic spread follows the blood supply of the rectum. It is more in a cephalite direction as compared to the colloidal direction. The TNM classification is the internationally recognized staging system, but Duke staging system is still prevalent. It is being used. Now, as if we talk about the treatment of rectal carcinoma, surgical excision of the tumor is the conventional management option, provided this can be achieved with clear oncological margins and acceptable risk of morbidity and mortality. So, surgical excision of the tumor is the conventional management option. However, the management of rectal cancer has become increasingly complex because of the various surgical techniques available nowadays. And then there is a range of new adjuvant and adjuvant options which also alter the treatment plan. Treatment of the, uh, the carcinoma rectum, again I repeat, it depends upon the stage of the disease. So we have to state the disease, then different modalities of treatment are used for the treatment of carcinoma rectum. Again, it's a multidisciplinary approach to treat the rectal carcinoma. Before treatment can be planned, it is necessary to assess. One, whether the patient is fit for surgery. Then, what is the extent of spread of the tumor? These are the two points which should be assessed in the beginning. This will modify the treatment whether we want to do a curative treatment, whether we can't want to do a palliation. Again I repeat, surgical excision of the tumor is the mainstay of curative therapy with clear oncological margins and acceptable risk of morbidity and mortality. Assessment of the spread and I told you what are the different staging investigation that includes CT, ultrasonography, endoluminal ultrasonography, PET scan. These are the investigation which we do for uh, uh, to stage the disease. These are staging investigation. What is the principle of surgical treatment? Radical excision of the rectum together with the mesorectum and associated lymph node should be the aim in most cases. In a curative resection, what should be our aim? Radical exchange includes what is required that a rectum should be excised, number one, with mesorectum and then associated lymph nodes. This is this is basically the it should be the aim when we are doing a curative surgery in rectal carcinoma. In the presence of widespread metastasis, other means of palliation should be considered. So when the disease, the stage is advanced, our aim 
to treat the disease is palliation. It is not the curative intention when the disease is advanced. And then we have different palliative options such as endoluminal stenting or external beam radiotherapy, although there are many, there may still be a role out for palliative resection. So resection can be curative, it can be palliative. For low extensive tumors, abdominal perineal resection with permanent colostomy is required. So in cases when the tumors they are advanced, what is required? A permanent colostomy along with extensive tumor abdominal perineal section. Another concept which is also called new adjuvant. This is again, this is one place it has a very good value using preoperative radiotherapy, preoperative chemotherapy in patients of rectal carcinoma. This is also called neoadjuvant chemoradiotherapy. And this is very effective in rectal carcinoma to downstake the disease. And this also reduces the local recurrence. Another option, which is another uh, aspect of treatment, which is adjuvant chemotherapy. This is a chemotherapy which is again used with the curative intention after surgery, after radical, after curative surgery, and this gives you a survival advantage in node positive patients. Adjuvant chemotherapy gives you survival advantage in node positive patient. What is the place of liver resection in colorectal carcinoma, rectal carcinoma? The place is when there is a solitary metastasis of the liver, single metastasis of the liver along with rectal carcinoma. This is the place where liver resection is done that segment is resected so that has best chance of cure for when there is a single or well localized liver metastasis. So this is the place of liver resection in cases of rectal carcinoma. So before surgery we have to uh, prepare these patient preoperative preparation in rectal carcinoma. That includes counseling of the patient. We have to counsel these patient. Then we have to create a stoma in this patient. Sitting of the stoma is discussed with the patient. We even locate the site where we have to make a stoma when it is indicated. We have to correct the anemia and electrolyte disturbance in these patient preoperatively. We also know what is the blood group of this particular patient and we have to arrange maybe it is required during operation that is again a pre-operative preparation done for rectal carcinoma another very important aspect bowel preparation in rectal carcinoma where we have to do a restorative operation after excision of the tumor anterior resection and this is done by mechanical cleansing and by anemas. Nowadays we use a colonoscopic kit which is available and this is used for bowel preparation when we are doing going to do anastomosis in rectal carcinoma. We have to give prophylaxis in these patient regarding D vein thrombosis. Prophylactic antibiotics have role when doing surgery in these patients. What are the different treatment or surgical options in these patients? Local operations, they include early rectal cancer, especially T1 and good prognosis to T2 lesion, 
may be amenable to local transanal excision, preserving much of the rectal reservoir and therefore near normal function of the rectum. Histological analysis of the specimen is then used to assess the adequacy of axion with respect to the probability of positive lymph node being left behind. This may range from 10% in T1 cancers to 20% in T2 cancers. Then when we are treating locally, chance of probability of positive lymph node being left behind in these patients. So transanal excision. So local excision which is done in these patients is usually performed with one of the commercially available transanal laparoscopic systems or with equipment modified from TATME procedures that is transanal transanal total mesorectal excision which is done through again from the anus through the rectum what is interior resection for tumors of the middle and lower third of the rectum especially rectal carcinoma which are confined to the upper third of the rectum middle third of the rectum we definitely going to do uh, anterior resection, a restorative operation. Again, anterior resection can be done laparoscopically as well as by open surgery. Laparoscopic anterior resection is as safe as open surgery in terms of short and long term complications and oncological outcomes. Nowadays, even robotic surgery is being done in these patients. So one treatment option anterior resection where after excision of the tumor we restore the continuity by anastomosis is you must keep in mind this is interior resection. It's a, it's a operation for especially for upper one third middle one third rectal carcinomas. Another surgical option for uh, rectal carcinoma is a Hartman operation, especially those patients who present with obstruction. And on the table, we can excise the tumor, but we cannot do the anas primary anastomosis. We can resort to Hartman procedure. What is Hartman procedure? Where the proximal end is brought out as end colostomy and the distal and is closed and kept in the pelvis because it cannot be brought on the surface distal and cannot be brought on the surface as mucus fistula this is Hartman procedure but keep in mind Hartman procedure is a difficult procedure when we have to reverse it another surgical option for rectal carcinoma when when lower third of the rectum is involved and we cannot save the sphincter we cannot save the sphincter anal sphincter then we have to do abdominal perineal resection apr where we sacrifice the uh, anal sphincter and then we have to do a permanent colostomy end colostomy in the deft iliac fossa sigmoid colostomy this is this is apr abdominal perineal resection In advanced cases, we, as I told you, we have to do palliative procedures. What are different palliative procedures? This is by endoscope and we can do endoluminal stenting. Metallic stents, they are available and we can put it with endoscope in a, a, that part which is narrowed, causing obstruction. Another option is palliative colostomy. This is indicated only in cases giving rise to intestinal obstruction and when we cannot excise the rectal cancer. It is washed locally. In those cases, we just do palliative proximal diversion colostomy in these patients. So 
another option in rectal carcinoma, advanced carcinoma, presenting with with uh, advanced obstruction is colostomy, palliative colostomy. Then more extensive procedures sometimes they are done for rectal carcinoma. Then there is a local spread and the rectal carcinoma is involving other organ in the pelvis. This is called pelvic excentration. Different organs within the pelvis they can be excised along with rectal carcinoma. To the extent bladder can be excised, uterus, upper part of the vagina can be excised. So these are very extensive procedures. They can be done when the surrounding organs they are involved. Then in those cases we have to do number of restorative operation in these patients. For example, if we have to excise the bladder, then obviously we have to re-implant the ureters in the colon in those cases. So these procedures, these extensive procedures, they are called pelvic excentration. Obviously, the aim is to eradicate the curative intention, eradicate the disease. The role of surgery, uh, radiotherapy and uh, chemotherapy, I already discussed with you. Radiotherapy is provided an adequate dose is given in these patients. It has a neoadjuvant role as well as role after local recurrence. Radiotherapy can be combined with chemotherapy preoperatively as a new adjuvant radio chemotherapy to drastically reduce the tumor load before surgical intervention. Palliative radiation sometimes also done for inoperable primary tumors or local recurrence. So in those cases, the role of radiotherapy is palliative. Again, chemotherapy is another modality of treatment which we use for uh, rectal carcinoma. Its role as a neoadjuvant chemotherapy, its role as a adjuvant chemotherapy, I told you. So number of drugs, they are tried uh, for as a chemotherapy, chemotherapeutic agent. So the place is neoadjuvant, adjuvant therapy and then sometimes chemotherapy is also used for advanced disease, disseminated disease. The most commonly used drugs are 5 fluorouracil oxaliplatinum, platin. Then new drugs they are also available which are used as chemotherapeutic agents in rectal carcinomas. Irinotecan, Setuximab, monoclonal antibodies, this N uh, blocking antibodies, they are used and they are targeted, use targeted uh, chemotherapy uh, as a for, uh, for the treatment of rectal carcinoma. Another aspect of rectal carcinoma, we call it recurrence. So when we say recurrent disease, what is meant by recurrent disease? Recurrence can be local and recurrence can be distal metastasis. So local recurrence can occur and recurrence can occur anywhere in the body. Local recurrence after radical exine is a major problem in cases when we excise the tumor and this is one problem recurrence local recurrence which is which is a major problem after surgical exion obviously the most uh, com common cause is any adequate removal of the whole tumor at the initial operation because maybe we have left behind micro deposits that's why we use adjuvant therapy adjuvant radio chemotherapy if the mesorectum is removed in its entirety during the initial surgery, the local recurrence rate can be reduced to less than 5%. So this depends upon how radical your surgery is, how much mesorectum you have removed. So local recurrence is one problem which is associated with exion and surgery of the rectum. Prognosis. Now we can talk about the prognosis 
as along with Duke's staging, we have talked about the uh, prognosis of the disease. When performed in specialized centers with appropriate patient management, adjuvant, neoadjuvant therapy, the five-year survival rate is around 50%. Now, what prognosis depends upon? It depends upon what is the TNM staging. The later the stage is, poor the prognosis. Again, the lower the tumor in the rectum, the worse the outlook, worse the prognosis. And if the grading of the tumor is undifferentiated lesion, we have a worse prognosis than when compared with the well differentiated or intermediate lesions as far as the grading of the rectal carcinoma is concerned. So, prognosis we have to assess and that again depends on number of factors. Staging of the disease which includes T, what is the N and what is the M. That determines the prognosis. Again, the site of the tumor in the rectum. Again, grade of the tumor and differentiated lesion, they have poor prognosis. So, we also should also assess the prognosis of the rectal carcinoma. This is all about rectal carcinoma. Now, if you have any question regarding rectal carcinoma, you can ask me through your WhatsApp question and the group and I will respond to your question. Thank you.